Um, but want to welcome you again to our Leveraging Dance Marathon post um, experience post-grad webinar. Um, like I said, we're so thrilled for this next chapter in your lives and want to do everything that we can at CMN Hospitals and this larger network of the Miracle Network Dance Marathon movement to support you in this transition. Um, so today, I um, want to quickly introduce who will be joining us. My name is Blair Janice. I'm the Director of Dance Marathon Strategy at CMN Hospitals. I'm joined today by my colleague Taylor Dietrich, who is Director of Dance Marathon Acquisition. We also are so thrilled and thankful that um, Ashley Bird White is joining us. She's the Assistant Director for Career Education and an alumni coach at the Career Center at University of South Carolina. Dr. Tessa Bonney, who is a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Illinois Chicago and is a DePaul University Dance Marathon alumni. And Madison Grasty, who is a software development engineer with Comcast and is a um, Dance Marathon alumna from the University of Florida. Um, so thank you all so much for being with us today. You'll hear from each of these panelists and guests and have an opportunity to ask them questions at the end of this webinar. So send questions in the chat and then um, feel free to write questions down that we can direct towards this panel um, later in the call. So a quick overview of what we'll cover today. We'll try to get through a lot in a short time. Um, but first, we'll talk about the skills and experience that you've gained as part of your time with Dance Marathon in a variety of roles. Um, we'll hear from some experts um, from Ashley Bird White, an expert in career guidance. Um, and she has some really phenomenal content to share with us today. So we're so grateful that she's joining us to share um, her knowledge and expertise. And then we have our post-grad panel. So that will be an opportunity to ask questions directly of folks who have been in your shoes in a variety of um, career paths from public service to the corporate sector um, to the nonprofit industry. So really thrilled to have um, a representative um, career path um, options available here. Um, so think of questions that you may want to ask those panelists and we'll get started. So the poll feature um, should be showing up on your screen now. So to get to know a little bit more about the folks who are joining us, um, we wanted to hear directly from you. So do you have a plan yet for your postgrad experience? Feel free to start voting now. The options are pursue postgraduate education, participate in a service year program, seek employment in, a field of, in your field of study or in another field. And the last one is, I've been asked 100 times, please don't ask again. So we'll take um, that message loud and clear. Um, so keep voting and we'll share those results in just a moment. And if you're watching on YouTube, please feel free to, um, to chat us your response in the comments. We want to hear from you. All right, it looks like most folks have voted now. Um, so you can see the results. Most folks are here on this call are seeking employment in their field of study and pursuing postgraduate education. So um, thanks for participating and telling us a little bit more about yourselves. And today, the few things that we want to make sure that you accomplish and feel like you leave this call with are to understand the skills that you've developed as a result of your involvement in Dance Marathon to be able to articulate the, how the experiences you have had with Dance Marathon impact your development and contribute to your value as a professional or prospective employee. And then to realize the resources and network available to you as part of this movement and as a part of um, your institution. So I will turn things over to Taylor to share a little bit about the skills um, you've gained through Dance Marathon. Hey everyone, so sorry about that. Zoom problems, right? We've all been there. Um, didn't, have a, didn't have access to get in as a host, but um, thanks Blair for teeing us up and getting us started here. So, and one of the things that, you know, as Blair and I were putting this presentation together and as we talked with our panelists, uh, one thing that we, you know, have really found and even from our personal experience is that we have gained so much incredible experience and we know transferable skills, hard and soft skills um, that we can use as we go out into the post-grad experience, whether that be the workplace or continuing education, whatever that may look like. And sometimes it's really difficult to translate how what we do being involved in dance marathon then translates into something outside of dance marathon uh, we even struggle sometimes to be able to relay 
the experience and the power of the organizations that we've been so heavily involved in. And so what we hope to do or what I hope to do in this in this piece is really thinking about the skills that we have as they relate to maybe different progressions through um, dance marathon involvement and what that looks like, um, you know, then talking about that outside of dance marathon context. So really starting off with what are skills um, and thinking about um, as they relate to dance marathon. So by definition, a, a skill is the ability to do something really well um, or to consider yourself an expert or have expertise in that. So uh, what you see on the screen right now is really walking through um, from the moment that you get involved with dance marathon as a participant, if that was your entry point, um, you know, what are some of those skills that you can even talk about as a participant being a part of dance marathon that then translates somewhere else. So even thinking about one of the one of the first things that I know I learned was how to make a fundraising ask and what that looks like. So, you know, from the I, I know in dance marathon was the first experience I had in making a fundraising ask. And so what are some of the skills that come with that really one being really confident in what you're talking about, um, you know, being able to seek um, the, the information or the knowledge that you have in order to be able to go and ask someone, um, you know, hey, I would like for you to support me here, um, being able to go and ask someone for a donation can certainly be a little overwhelming uh, and a little intimidating. So thinking about, you know, you have to have good relationship building to be able to even then go and approach someone to ask them for a donation, or you have to have, you know, a strong backbone to be able to feel confident in the fact that you're asking for someone to, to donate on your behalf. So, and then, you know, as you can see other ones that are on the screen, I think another great one is, is as a participant, you're learning a new concept. Um, it's more than likely that dance marathon um, is is a new has become a new thing to you at that point in your life. And so what that shows is that you have the ability to take in information and learn from others and receive information and then go out and then make decisions based off of either what you're being asked to do or how to further engage. So um, and a large part of, of really as a participant where you start off with is, is being able to communicate, hey, you know, I'm struggling, I don't have the resources that I need, or being able to communicate your desire to learn more. Um, so being able to interact with folks that maybe you haven't before um, is another great skill set. So moving forward into a team captain, uh, this is certainly where you start to take on more of a leadership role within the organization. Um, so really thinking about as you look to uh, maybe read that you're creating a shared vision for a team. Things that you could read that as is, is you're motivating uh, and you're collaborative and you have the ability to bring people behind an idea, you know, collect their insight, collect their knowledge, be able to help them set goals, and then you're able to help them achieve those goals. Um, so really uh, bringing a team together, getting them to see a larger picture or what is the potential, and then you're, you're creating the opportunity to get resources for them um, to be successful. Um, another way that you could look at one of the skills that you learn in Dance Marathon leadership is leading a meeting. Uh, and maybe you read that as, um, you know, public speaking, um, being organized, knowing how to plan to engage people in a meeting where you're not just talking at them, right? So thinking about what are some of those things and experiences, regardless of level of Dance Marathon involvement that you have gained um, throughout your experience. And then really taking that a step further into the executive board and committees. Managing your peers is one of the most difficult things that I think, you know, is thrown at us in dance marathon leadership. It's not easy to be able to have crucial conversations um, with people that maybe are your friends outside of, you know, inside certainly, but also outside of those meetings and being able to help them course correct whenever they're maybe not doing the level of work that you know that they're capable of. It's never an enjoyable conversation to have, but managing your peers comes with being able to build relationships, being able to build trust um, and having that, that candidness to be able to walk up to someone and say like, hey, I think that we can do better here. What can I do to help you? Um, and then certainly looking at things like conflict management, conflict, not just looking at it as between two people, but we certainly know that, you know, one of the greatest things that dance marathon students do is, is they're adaptable, right? We know that things can get thrown at us all the time. And so really thinking about problem solving and critical thinking as another incredible skill set um, that we have gained through our experiences with dance marathon. So thinking about all of these skills, um, we want to talk a little bit about the experience that you all have had. And I think a great place to start is to think about your role, and that includes the key responsibilities that you had 
in any variety of these positions, and then your involvement um, within that. So if you're trying to think of what some of these things are, you're trying to build out your resume section related to Dance Marathon, look back at your job description or the position description that you've had for Dance Marathon for any variety of roles that you've held. Then consider the actual lived experience that you've had. And that, you know, many of the things that Taylor talked about, navigating difficult challenges as a team, um, especially including our current situation. You know, of course, we would not wish this year end on anyone or the transition from your physical event to maybe a virtual or digital campaign. Um, and really, you know, within the larger context of everything happening, not, you know, a situation we would want anyone to be in, but there still are things that you may have learned throughout that process or thinking about how you may have grown throughout this situation. So you may now have skills in working and managing a team remotely, or if there are other challenges that your team has faced, being able to pivot from plan A and develop plans B through Z and execute, execute those things and lead and inspire and build momentum around a new idea um, is something that you've gained as part of this experience. So if there are other challenges that you and your team have faced, consider how you grew through them and how you might share those experiences with others. So a few examples of some extremely valuable experiences that you have, might have had throughout Dance Marathon. Um, talking about peer management and leadership, like Taylor mentioned, starting at the interview and application process, either as a candidate for a committee or an exec position, you probably interviewed yourself or um, you were a part of an interview process where you needed to communicate why you were passionate about the opportunity, why you were uniquely qualified. And in certain roles, you may have facilitated those interviews, gaining the logistics and human side of onboarding team members, setting expectations, creating a shared vision. So those are things that you can gain, that you have gained and can take with you into the workforce. So you, you know, not only have learned how to apply um, and interview for these roles, but once you're in them, how to consistently communicate with internal and external stakeholders. And like Taylor mentioned, I've likely served as a mediator for some conflict resolution. In addition to these items that I think are applicable across a variety of positions, there also are position specific experience. So depending on your role, you may have had, you know, finance and data analysis or budget management experience. You may have had to apply for grants throughout your time with Dance Marathon, helping to establish and um, set a fundraising goal by analyzing data. Um, as Taylor was mentioning, um, in the variety of positions that we have, you know, you, know may, you may know more than most if you were the catering director about food safety and hospitality and volunteer management or about facilities management if you were the event ops or logistics director. If you served in a partnership role, you may have engaged corporate partners, everything from making the initial pitch deck through executing the expectations of that partnership and stewarding them to return to another year. So really across all of these roles, um, you both had experience managing your peers, managing and setting and working towards goals as part of a long-term project, but also being a part of recruitment and fundraising efforts. So knowing that you've had the opportunity to build meaningful relationships and demonstrate impact, and of course, express empathy and understand what it means to be in solidarity with Miracle families and kiddos experiencing um, all that they are at our children's hospitals. Um, so ways to demonstrate some of your experience or to take what you've done in those roles and then share the results of what your personal impact has done um, in that position. So fundraising results, increases year over year, participant survey results, um, performance results, if you did any sort of evaluation of goals or of performance with your team. Another thing to take into consideration are any achievements and accomplishments that you had throughout Dance Marathon. So things like individual and organization awards, um, recognition through conferences like Dance Marathon Leadership Conference or the Distinguished Leader Award or other school awards that um, your program or you individually may have um, been recognized with. So as important as it is to identify these things, what really matters is your ability to share them with others. So taking the skills and experiences that you have um, and identifying the core competencies of your career field 
or maybe a variety of careers and fields that you're interested in. And that can be as easy as you know, asking some of our panelists today or um, doing a simple Google search for those things of core competencies in marketing or core competencies in public service uh, to find a list and understand what those are and then match your skills and experiences with that. You likely have something that is transferable. And I think the most actionable item here is to then brainstorm some value statements. So to say, you know, I accomplished X by doing Y, which resulted in, you know, A. So that, you know, an example of this is um, this practice is from um, the AAUW, which has some great resources available. So for example, for Dance Marathon, this could be, I created a more organized system for partner stewardship. Um, and communication by using my creative and organizational skills. And we now have greater partner retention and engagement, which increased corporate partner fundraising by 10%. So I took what I did um, using an action verb, inserted some of the skills that I have, and then shared the result directly of what my involvement as the corporate partnerships chair um, contributed towards Dance Marathon. So try to brainstorm some statements like that and we'll drop in the chat later that resource, um, a great workbook resource that can help you do that. And then consider your wider network, all the folks you've met through Dance Marathon. Um, and don't be afraid to ask for recommendations or referrals from them, from the partners, contacts that you've built a positive relationship with. And Ashley will go into uh, much more detail on this as an expert in this area. So I'd like to turn the time over to Ashley Bird White, um, who again is the Assistant Director for Career Education and is an alumni coach in the Career Center at University of South Carolina to share her expertise on career guidance with us. All right, thank you so much. Can you all hear me? Yep. Okay, um, so um, thank you so much for inviting me to um, speak with you all uh, and um, to share kind of um, some things that I hope, you know, you will be able to uh, use uh, this semester and, and even this summer. I know that, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty going on right now in the world today, and that can be pretty scary for, um, you know, new recent graduates, um, students that are trying to plan to go back to campus in the fall or are going to be doing things online. So, um, there's just a lot of things that are that are changing really quickly. So before we dive into the, the actual content, I wanted to just give you some food for thought that I think are you know is really important um, as we think about careers and what lies ahead for you all. And one of the big things that we always stress with our students is when it comes to major. I know that, you know, I was a psychology major and I'm doing something that is similar to psychology, but a lot for most people that are in the world of work, if you ask them what they majored in and what they're doing today, a lot of times it just is not, you know, not the same. Um, and so what I want you to keep in mind is regardless of what your major is, skills are going to be the most important thing uh, going into the world of work. Now that's not to say that major is not important. Um, major definitely does set a trajectory for certain certain things. But you know, if you are you know a psychology major like I was, it doesn't mean that you have to be a psychologist or have to be a psychology professor. There's going to be lots of opportunities out there um, for lots of different majors. I always tell students when I'm thinking about this concept, and I think it's really important is. There are jobs and careers that will be created, especially after this pandemic or as it's unfolding, that have been created now um, that aren't available or were not available even a few months ago. Uh, and so the, the careers and the jobs that are available are going to be changing all the time um, and majors don't change as much. So just keep that in mind that the skills that you gain are gonna be very important and that's what employers are gonna care um, most about. The other thing to keep in mind is this um, group of students or, or um, really generation are expected to have anywhere from 15 to 20 different jobs in two to three different industries over the course of your professional life. 
Um, and so that's really something, something to think about, that you're not going to be doing the same thing forever, which is very different than probably parents and grandparents for sure. So all that to say, the first job that you get, you know, right out of college, you know, it may not be in most cases your dream job and that's okay. So it's a stepping stone to get to where you're going and you might not know where that is, but just think about the skills again and just think about kind of where you'd like to head. The other thing to think in, or to keep in mind as we go through is it is 100% okay to not know exactly what you're going to do after you graduate. Some of you have graduated or will be graduating here in the next you know, couple of weeks and you have no idea and that's totally fine. But what we want to do is think about planning. And if you have time, we wanna do that early. And you probably have already been doing that but you just didn't know. So just know it's totally okay. I can, I can say with 100% certainty that if you had asked me, even graduation, when I graduated with my college degree, if I was going to be doing what I was doing, I would have thought you were crazy. So just keep that in mind. I think most of us can agree with that that are in the world of work today. So it's okay to not know exactly where you're going, um, but just making steps to, to get to where you, you know, that kind of where you want to go in the near future. The, the top skills that employers always look for when we're thinking about skills, and I've listed them there and um, given the link to uh, the NACE um, website. NACE is, in career services, one of our national professional organizations. And so on that website, there will be a ton of um, information about each of those skills. And I have to believe that a lot of you have probably gotten some really good um, you know, skills that follow um, those guidelines. So regardless of major industry, you can bet that employers are going to be looking for those skills that I've listed there. Okay. okay, so what I want to share with you today, and I know I don't have too much time, so we're just going to scratch the surface, is really thinking you to make the most of summer, to make the most of your fall and beyond. Um, the importance of action plan and throughout I've woven resources that are available to you that are free. So just some things to keep in mind. All right, so it's really important to think about um, some summer goals. And I'm going to give a huge shout out to my um, colleague who's fantastic in the Career Center, Holly Johnson, for, um, you know, we just did a presentation for our group at USC um, on some of these. So some of this content comes from her presentation, but it's just so good I wanted to share. So summer goals, really thinking about um, reflection and connection, learning and experience, and planning and readiness. So I'll go through a little bit of each of these to kind of give you some tangible things that you can be doing um, especially now that most things are, are kind of shut down and we're kind of in a standstill. Even though the world seems like it's in a standstill, we don't want to be in a standstill. And there's a lot of things that you can do to really help with your career. Okay, so one of the big things is this reflection piece. So what happened last year? It seems like so long ago. I can't believe that you know we're we're May. It seemed like March was just never ending, and then April was never ending. But here we are in May, and one of the things that you really want to think about and take some time to do is just to reflect on what happened last year um, in your position in dance marathon, in your academics, if you're in any other clubs, if you have a part time job kind of what happened, what did you learn, what really brought you joy, um, you know, what were some mistakes maybe that you made or some insights, you really just want to kind of, you know, old school, sit down with a pen and paper and just get it all out, right? It's fresh in your mind, so it's really helpful for you to just kind of think about those things. Um, these are some really good questions for reflection. And I think so many times we just don't allow ourselves enough time to really reflect. We just, we're busy. We go about our day really quick and we don't actually just take some time to really reflect on what we've experienced. So some things, you know, and I've highlighted some really good ones that I like um, as it ties into this presentation are just thinking about the skills that 
that you worked on this year? And really thinking about the top skills that I mentioned in the beginning, also thinking about what does future you look like? And what could you do this year, or even in the next few months or this summer to get closer to that future you? And I'm not talking future you has to be 20 years from now. I'm saying future you could be in a couple months. <laughs> so just who, who is, what, are the, what is the type of person that you wanna be? What do you wanna learn and know? Um, and just really spend some time uh, to, to sit down with that. Um, this is a fantastic, and I won't take ownership of this, this is my, again, my colleague Holly, um, where she created this, really this great reflection and you could do it in a Google doc or whatever, but so often we go in for an, an interview and we're like, I cannot remember anything. And this is a great opportunity for you as you really reflect on this past year to really think about the story that you might tell or what happened, the skills that you demonstrated, and then really kind of crafting a response and um, how you might answer um, an interview question. And so that's really helpful because again, it's a great reflection exercise and it really gets you thinking at kind of how can I translate my experience um, to a future employer or graduate school or whatever the case may be, because that is a, one of the top things that employers always tell us is students have so many great things on their resume, but it's really hard for them when it comes time to articulate that experience. We know that you, I can tell you, you all have probably done so much more uh, in your undergrad experience than I've probably done in my professional life so far. <laughs> Sometimes I look at college students' resumes, I'm like, what, what did I do? So. You all are doing some fantastic work and we wanna make sure that you're sharing that with employers. It's so important. So some other things you can do for really thinking about skills reflection. Building and updating your resume is a great opportunity for reflection. Make sure that that's ready to go. Um, you never ever know when someone's gonna ask you for that and you don't wanna miss an opportunity um, to, you know, out on an internship or whatnot because you didn't, you know, have your resume up to date. Um, I know that um, they, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about kind of bullet points and crafting those and I think that's fantastic. So those are the most important part of your resume. No one is going to know what you did better than you and it's your job to really sell that to an employer and you do that through your bullet points. So I always kind of break it down into the skill plus task plus scope, and I gave you an example there. Um, so it would be very easy for someone to just say, analyze social media traffic. And that's fine, you can absolutely say that, but my goodness, look at the information that an employer can gather when you really highlight and you really give them the full scope of what you did. Because that is very different than just analyze social media traffic. So, Bullet points are usually one to two um, lines um, each. So you don't wanna go more than two lines, but you wanna pack a lot of punch in those two lines. Um, because again, nobody's gonna know the full story unless you let them in on that. Um, the other big thing that you can do is really thinking about maintaining and fostering connections. So stay connected with your contacts this summer, stay connected with your faculty, your campus staff, your advisors, your peers, your supervisors, all of that, because those people are here to help you and they're here to be um, a reference for you at some point. Um, so even if it's just a check-in to know, you know, to let someone know how you're doing, to ask how they're doing, um, I can tell you uh, being on a college campus, nothing brings me greater joy than when I hear from a student <laughs> and they tell me how they're doing. Um, and so just keep that in mind. Um, just, you know, send an email. Um, we would love to hear from you. So make sure that you're doing that. Update and perfect your LinkedIn page. That's another big thing that you can do. Um, utilizing any mentoring platforms that you have on your campus. Uh, so a lot of um, campuses have mentoring platforms. Uh, utilize the Alumni Association at your campus. Um, you can also utilize LinkedIn alumni page. So you just go to your university's LinkedIn page and on the left hand side, it'll say alumni and you have a whole database of people that have connected through that page. So make sure that you're doing that. And summer is a great time to do informational interviews. So if you're trying to explore what you want to do or you're not sure and you're trying to build connections, 
summer is a great time to reach out to people, especially alum, and just get to know kind of, you know, there's no harm in reaching out to somebody to say, I see that you're currently, you know, at working in marketing at, you know, Pepsi. I would love to learn more about how you got to where you are. People love to talk about themselves. They love to help other people. So you'll get a lot of good responses just going about it that way. Um, another thing that you can do is thinking about learning something new and gaining experience. Um, there are, a, believe it or not, remote internship and volunteer opportunities. So just keep that in mind. I put volunteer match as a popular website. Idealist.org is a popular website. You can also do a LinkedIn job search. Um, you can also utilize your campus career center. I know at USC we have Handshake. A lot of schools have a system similar or um, they have um, Handshake themselves. So take that opportunity to seek out internships or volunteer opportunities that are remote. They are available. They may be more difficult to find, but most career centers are up and running, so you can reach out to your campus um, to, to help you with that as well. And you can basically learn anything that you can think of on the internet. <laughs> like, so use the platforms. I put some up there. They're free. They're great resources. If you're somebody that's like, you know, I see um, in a lot of job descriptions, I know you'd mentioned job competencies that they're looking for somebody that knows how to build website or code. And I don't know how to do that. I promise you, you can learn how to do that on the internet. So take this opportunity to brush up on skills, to develop new skills. Um, and those are all things you can add to your resume and talk about in interviews. Um, making a plan is so critical. So, um, and it doesn't have to be detailed. Um, so this is just a sample plan, but it's very helpful, especially in times like today where literally I don't even know what day it is half the time. Every day feels the same and it's like, I don't even know what's going on. So sometimes it's just really helpful to say, okay, by, you know, next Friday, I will have, you know, reached out to two people on the alumni website to connect. Um, so even just making those little um, milestone goals can go a long way, but really think about what you wanna get out of your, you know, this month or out of your summer or out of fall um, and make a plan to do that. Because if you don't, the time goes so fast and then you're wondering, you know, why you didn't start this months ago. So just making a plan is very, very critical. And just things to keep in mind. As I mentioned earlier, there are lots of uncertainty today. Um, it is a very challenging time for everybody. Um, you know, we really are, when they keep saying we're all in this together, um, it, we really are. I think everybody um, and every as aspect of life is facing uncertainty. Um, I just kind of have been thinking this too shall pass. It will, things will, you know, change. It definitely will change, but things, you know, will start to move and get back to, um, you know, somewhat sense of normalcy. Um, control what you can. I know it's really hard right now because sometimes we just feel like we have no control over anything. We're job searching and we're like, I have no idea. I just have no control. So try to control what you can. Um, again, that comes with planning. So, you know, you can control if you start building connections. You can control updating your resume and your LinkedIn page. Um, so there's certain things that you can control. So try to do some of those things and keep moving forward and fine tuning. Now is not the time to be stagnant. Um, now is the time to keep pushing forward, perfecting your skills, um, reaching out to people and doing the best that you can. The other thing is to be open and, you know, to new and unexpected possibilities. Because, you know, the job market can be a little rocky right now. Again, you might not get the job that you always dreamed that you would get. It doesn't mean that you won't ever get it, but maybe right now is just not the right time. So be open to new and unexpected possibilities. Again, I never thought I would be, I'm from Buffalo, New York. I never thought I would be in Columbia, South Carolina. And I was open. Um, to, to moving, um, and here I am, and I love it. I love U USC, I love the campus, and so, you know, who would have thought? So just to kind of be open to those things. Be creative and innovative. Um, be adaptable and flexible. Again, you know, things are 
ever changing. And so it's really important that we think about, you know, being adaptable and flexible when we have to be. And for those of you that are currently job searching, whether you're full-time job searching or your internship um, searching, there are companies that are still hiring. So um, keep in mind, I put an article there of companies that are still hiring. There's a lot of companies that, you know, are, are hiring. Some are not um, right now, but they will. Um, but there are things that you can, you can apply for. So just keep that in mind. Not all hope is lost. It's, it will be okay. And I think that's it, but I will be around um, for, for the Q and A part. Yeah, thank you so much, Ashley. We really appreciate you sharing your experience and expertise with us. Um, so a quick poll for you all. Um, of the areas that Ashley shared, which are you most excited to pursue? You can see them on the screen now. Skills reflection, maintaining and fostering connections, learning something new and gaining experience, or making a plan. We know you are all master planners from your experience with Dance Marathon, so I imagine that calendar slide made a few of you pretty excited. Thanks everyone for sharing. It looks like maintaining and fostering those connections has won out. Um, so I hope to see some new LinkedIn requests from you all to the Dance Marathon managers sometime soon. So if you have any questions for the panel, we're gonna hop into our panel Q&A time. We're gonna start with some questions that we've already gathered um, from students who are attending today. Um, if you have additional ones, drop them in the chat. Absolutely. Yeah, we have um, other dance marathon managers that will be monitoring that chat. So if we don't get our questions or don't get your questions answered during our time today, we'll be sure to um, follow up in our blog post that will come out afterwards with some answers to those questions. Um, but just as a review, uh, Blair and I will be participating as dance marathon alumni ourselves. And then we certainly have Ashley who just spoke and then looking forward to hearing more from two other dance marathon alumni um, that are joining us today as well, Dr. Tessa Bonney and Madison so Tessa, I'm going to come to you first with our, um, with our question to really kick us off. Would love to know how you transitioned from being a highly involved student leader into settling into your postgraduate plans. Sure. Um, first, I'd like to just say thank you, Taylor and Blair, for having me. And thanks, Ashley, for sharing all of that um, content. That's really great. I texted Blair in the middle and wished that I had had this back when I was a, an undergrad. So this was really great. Um, but to answer the question, um, you know, I, I tried a few different things after graduation. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but, um, you know, Dance Marathon, I think, really taught me that I wanted to look for opportunities that aligned with my values. Um, and many of those values were contextualized by my experiences with Dance Marathon. Um, so I think that Dance Marathon allowed me to apply skills that I developed in school. Uh, so then I, I had applied skills and I could say that in a, in a job interview. Um, and I wanted to organize and I wanted to lead and I wanted to really understand and work to address the needs of other people. Um, and that's what really, I think ha has led me in my career. Um, I started out as a, a teacher in an alternative teaching program, similar to Teach for America for the first couple years after graduation. Um, and then from there, I decided to go back to graduate school um, and I got my master's in public health and my PhD in public health. Um, and I think that, you know, many of my experiences really um, helped me thrive in, in those positions. So, um, you know, I think just the value and skill uh, base that I developed in Dance Marathon was um, really crucial to my transition into uh, uh, my post-grad plans. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I couldn't agree more. Um, whenever I was speaking with Ashley before this webinar, I didn't even know as a South Carolina student that someone like her was a resource. So I think even just knowing that someone as incredible like that exists to be able to help a student like me who changed my major several times because I didn't have a you know, certain path. So um, yeah, thanks so much, Tessa. I appreciate it. All right, Madison, coming to you. Um, how did you use your experiences during from Dance Marathon during any of your interview or application processes? Yeah, absolutely. I was I was thinking about this question. I feel like, which might not be the most helpful answer, but you can basically apply DM to any question that you are asked in an interview, whether it be a technical, like skill, applicable skill question, um, or just about your personality and you know things that you're passionate about, stuff like that. I constantly found myself 
when I was interviewing, whether it be for internships or a full-time job, um, almost apologizing for saying, sorry, I use Dance Marathon for every single one of my responses, but it does kind of get across the point that you were so fully involved and like you were immersed, no matter if you were a dancer, um, like the, the thing that we saw on the screen earlier, dancer, executive board committee, delegate, whatever it might've been. Um, but definitely in my interviews, tangible things such as you have such skills, or I learned at least such skills from Dance Marathon about email and communication etiquette and saying thank you after an interview or even how to schedule an interview, um, things like that that you learned, I learned from setting up overall team meetings, creating agendas, stuff like that. So tangible skills in that sense. Um, and then also I learned if I'm passionate about something like I was with Dance Marathon, it was easy in interviews to talk about how, how I was excited for XYZ job or XYZ role. Um, I, I was lucky enough, I interned at Comcast twice and it led into my career, but each time I found something new that I loved about the company that I could kind of latch on to and get excited about that then I could carry through. And I think DM teaches you how to sell your passions or in the same sense of a fundraising ask or something like that, it's easy to talk about something when you love it. So getting that experience in the dance marathon world and then relaying it into a career corporate world um, was pretty easy or easier than I expected just because you do have a lot of practice coming from dance marathon. Yeah, certainly have days that turn into months then turn into years worth of different challenges and, and, uh, and different interactions with folks. So um, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, Tessa, we'll come back to you. Um, what are some of the skills from your dance marathon experience that you rely most on day to day? Sure. I think that's a great question because I don't think that I expected them to be the skills that I do rely on the most, but um, really the collaborative skills and the communication skills. I think working with other people um, is really like an undersold skill that you develop um, as part of Dance Marathon. You know, I, I can't think of a job where you don't have to engage with other people or make collaborative decisions with other people. Um, and I certainly do that um, all the time, especially now, um, you know, I'm in public health and with the coronavirus, things are um, changing very quickly and, and there are a lot of decisions to be made. Um, you know, similar to like a really time crunched uh, 24 hour dance marathon, you know, you have to think on your feet and you have to communicate and work um, with other people and you have to stay really organized. And I think that, um, you know, the root of many of those skills for me was dance marathon. Um, and I think that those are really transferable to all sorts of industries and jobs. Um, so, so I would expect that those are skills that everyone on this webinar and beyond will rely on. Um, you know, forever, especially in, in the world of work. And I think kind of hopping um, onto that question, I know that Tessa, that you pursued postgraduate education. Um, I had just completed a degree as well. And I know a lot of our attendees at the beginning noted that that is what they're planning to do after they graduate undergrad. And so I think while we're talking about things relating and skills relating to your you know, next career step or, you know, to employment that these really relate to pursuing higher education as well beyond um, your undergraduate degree, you know, being able to work with people and communicate clearly with professors or with other researchers on your team um, to set long term goals for yourself and to balance, you know, perhaps the needs of working and going to school at the same time. Um, really, I think transferable to um, pursuing education as well. Um, Madison, we'll come back to you and then Ashley, we have a question for you afterwards. Um, but Madison, do you find that there are any parallels from your time as a student leader to the work that you do um, in your current role? Absolutely. I think like what Tessa said, I never expected that I would have used basically every skill. Like I found it, even if I didn't realize it at the time, especially when I was like preparing for this, I was reflecting, thinking, oh, I learned how to do that from Dance Marathon. I learned that from this experience, that experience, all relating to Dance Marathon, but in my role, I'm a software developer engineer at Comcast, although I don't, which you may expect, I don't sit and code all day, thankfully. I don't think I would be the best person to sit and code all day, but I do do the most odds and ends, whether it be application support and operations. So similarly in Dance Marathon, people were constantly coming with questions about XYZ and just becoming an expert in one thing 
is very helpful because you can answer questions, you can support people, anything like that. I also um, kind of do status reporting for my organization, which constantly in Dance Marathon, people are wondering, you know, what's happening with this? You have to plan an event, you have to do the finance, all that kind of stuff. And it all requires you to know the constant updates and being able to report back out and speak on them has really helped me um, in my job now. I also, once they found out that I came um, from Dance Marathon, I was tasked with budgeting for my organization. So I do plan and manipulate and operate our budget, which I was not a finance manager, but had the same, had similar skill sets um, and learned that Dance Marathon obviously is a fundraising organization. And so keeping in tune with the data and understanding how to analyze it and then how to report out on that is very helpful. Um, and just in general, working on a team, any type of project management type skills, if you're responsible for the success of XYZ project in your job, it is similar to the success of your Dance Marathon program. So without realizing it, you've through Dance Marathon, I learned to manage a program, I guess you would say, um, and that can be applied to the smallest projects at work and to the biggest, just making sure that the communications are on time, timelines are set, deliverables are met, action plans, um, all that kind of stuff, which going into a corporate world, I guess I was surprised by how many people walk into a meeting and don't walk out with something deliverable or an action item for the next meeting. So I've definitely taken those types of skills being like, wait, we're not leaving here until we figure out what's next. So so many parallels i could go on forever <laughs> well folks you heard it here first from the person who was madison's dance marathon manager and asking her to have these meetings weekly of going through our finance and data tracking spreadsheet look it really paid off look at her now managing budgets happy to hear that those meetings paid off mads um ashley i have a question for you as it relates to the the career center and your role would love to know I'm here Hello. Um, would love to know, maybe what are some of the, you know, as you have students that come into the Career Center, what are some of the maybe most frequently asked questions or maybe some of the most frequented struggles that you're seeing students yeah. interface with? Yeah, so I think, you know, we get so many questions about all sorts of things. I think, you know, a lot of big questions are, um, you know, networking and how to even do that. Um, I think we get a lot of questions about that. Like students know that they need to network. Um, and it's funny because I work in career services and I'm not even a huge person that loves to network, right? It's awkward. I think everybody would agree that it is kind of a very uncomfortable and awkward situation. But that's why I think, you know, especially for people that are more introverted, LinkedIn is great or any of the mentoring platforms that universities offer can be really helpful. Um, so just building those connections. I think that's one question that we get asked. Um, I think, you know, another question is just, again, like kind of the things that we've been talking about, what are employers looking for and how can I make sure that I, that I have those? Um, and I think a lot of it goes back to, you know, if you're a student that's involved um, in, you know, in different, uh, extracurricular activities, which I don't even, you know, I think extracurricular activity sounds fluffy, but you know, you're doing things. And a lot of times they're, you know, you spend so much time doing them. Um, and it's all about how you articulate that. So being intentional with your language, um, really helping employers um, that may not understand fully what the experience that you've had. I think sometimes um, there's common language like I mean, I will be honest, I don't know all there is to know about Dance Marathon. I know we have it on our campus. I talked a little bit to, with Taylor yesterday, um, but there's, you know, so helping someone that doesn't have that context understand all the work that goes into pulling off that large event um, is really important. And it's, it's your job as the person that's kind of putting that forward to do that. So um, I think that that's always um, a challenge uh, and something that we see all the time um, is really articulating those experiences. But anytime you can practice giving a resume to somebody that doesn't know all that you do and saying, what are some things that you took away from this document? Um, or could you tell me what you think I'm capable of after reading this document? Those are all really good ways to kind of um, gauge how well you're coming across in your document.
Yeah, that is phenomenal advice, Ashley. And I just um, dropped a workbook that some of you may be interested in um, into the chat, a link on um, this workbook from the AUW, which um, is focused on salary negotiation, which is definitely something that you want to think about and be prepared for if you're um, entering into interviews and applications and all of that. But the first half really focuses on how you articulate these value statements and what belongs on your resume and in your portfolio. So if you're kind of looking for a how-to, um, feel free to, to check that out. It's a free resource. So um, you can find that link in the chat. Awesome. Well, knowing that we're coming up at the top of our hour for some folks that have to leave, um, we wanted to be respectful of time. But before, um, so we're going to ask everyone one final question, and then we'll go to some of the questions that are that have been dropped in the chat for panelists or for Blair and I to answer. Um, so Tessa, starting with you, if you could give one piece of advice to either a rising senior or a graduating, a recent grad or graduating senior, um, what might that be? Sure. Um, so, you know, I think especially now, um, you know, it's pretty crazy and unprecedented time um, and, and can be kind of tumultuous, but I think, um, you know, it's important to be really flexible. And I think that as uh, dance marathoners, um, you have so many skills and, and such an interesting set of values and um, things that you can offer to graduate programs and jobs that I think um, you know, just take the time to figure out what matters most to you and then be really flexible about what's out there right now. Look at those companies that were linked that are hiring, um, you know, look at graduate programs. Um, you know, if you're planning to go back in the fall, uh, really think about ways you can, um, you know, access online resources uh, that can really ready you for your last senior year. Um, I think that there's a, a lot of opportunity um, that can come out of this, uh, this really interesting time. And if anyone is well suited to, um, you know, enter the workforce and, and really contribute to those um, who are in need in this time of COVID-19, it's certainly Dance Marathon graduates. So uh, th those would be my few pieces of advice for everyone. Perfect. Madison, same question for you. Absolutely. Um, I guess first I would say congrats because whether it's your senior year, I did, I got a master's degree after. So you come up to this big, like changing point in your life. And it's definitely, I kept thinking, you know, where do I go next? But my biggest piece of advice was to look back and think about all your, I mean, even, you know, high school, middle school, whatever it might be, but stay connected to all those people. Like Tess was saying, we, each of us involved with Dance America has so many skills. Um, and if you stay connected with the people in your network that you built up this far, you'll be surprised later on, like how they overlap. I'm constantly stalking people on LinkedIn, like, oh my gosh, they work there and they do this and they were in that organization in college. And now they're, you know, 10 years ahead of me in their career, yet I've already done something like that or X, Y, Z. So staying connected with people in the past, because you will be surprised where your peers end up. Um, and two, just anyone that you meet along the way, keeping in mind your skills and finding those connections, because it's the greatest way like Ashley was saying, networking is a little bit awkward, but if you can like break the ice with one thing that you have in common, whether it be a skill or an organization, a club, whatever it might be, um, those connections will definitely keep you going in your career and make it more enjoyable along the way. Awesome. And then Ashley, same question for you. Any advice? Yeah, sure. So I think my advice would be, you know, don't be afraid to try something totally new. Um, you know, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to take a leadership role, even if you feel like you're not ready for that. Um, you would be surprised, you know, that you could rise to the challenge um, and there will be people that will help and support you. I think if I look back on my, you know, even my college career, my professional career, um, the, my most rewarding things that I, that I, you know, hold close have been the experiences, the positions, the projects where I originally on the surface was like, what? <laughs> um, like, am I the best person for this? And, you know, you, I mean, I, I don't know. I think that that you learn so much about yourself um, and they have been my most proudest accomplishments um, when I really think about it. And so 
um, really, I would say going into this next year, or if you're even job searching, don't be afraid to just try something totally new, you know, um, go to a, go to, you know, do a student org that you, you know, wouldn't normally find yourself in and try it out or um, serve on a committee. Because uh, you just don't know, you know, what, what you will find um, or what you'll fall in love with. Uh, if you don't try different things, you know, there's a career development theory that um, I love so much because I think it's just really great, but it's called plant happenstance. And the whole point of the theory is really putting yourself in those kind of positions where good things can happen to you. Um, so going to an alumni networking event, going to, um, you know, again, a, a signing up for a committee, uh, all those things can put yourself in a position to be seen um, and learn new skills. You know, if you do the same things that you've always done, you don't grow. So that would be my piece of advice to really push yourself this upcoming year to try something new that, you know, maybe even is a little scary, but you'd be surprised what you could learn uh, by doing that. And for um, anyone who's worried or for anyone who wants to make that networking and being purposeful about that, um, I just listened to this great podcast. I put it in the chat and we'll put all the links that we shared in the chat in a blog post recap so you'll all get that. Um, but it's about how networking doesn't have to be a drag. So if that is something that's scary to you about trying to build um, new connections, then that might be a good, good listen for you. Um, but thank you so much for that, Ashley. And um, if either you or Madison have to, to hop, we totally understand. Um, and just want to thank you for, for being here um, as we hop into some questions in the chat. Um, it looks like we've got quite a few in here. Um, the first one being, do you have any suggestions on how to get involved with um, Children's Miracle Network Hospitals post-grad? Um, and I think there are a lot of ways to do this. So if you're looking for a career, um, we always post our job opportunities on the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals LinkedIn page. I would also just follow and connect with that page because you'd probably be surprised by how many folks you might know or who you might be able to connect with who either went to your alma mater or did dance marathon um, at the university or high school that you're at um, and who would be willing to connect with you. Um, but outside of a, a career path, um, at Children's Miracle Network, we also have over 170 children's hospitals. So um, think about the children's hospital that you support or in your hometown or where you might be moving to and what are opportunities there, um, whether those are jobs or volunteer opportunities. Um, your local hospital or the CMN hospital um, that you may be closest to when you move, if you're you know, leaving campus or where your school is located. Um, has a lot of great opportunities from um, participating in fundraising events like 5Ks and Young Professional Boards, um, which is a great way to not only continue using the fundraising skills you have, but to meet other young professionals um, in your area and kind of maintain and foster some of those connections that Ashley was talking about. Um, but there are also ways likely to support your dance marathon program. Um, I know that's a, a question we've got um, further in the chat. So consider things like joining the alumni team if your dance marathon program has alumni participants or if they don't, um, you could be the one to start that. So being able to continue to stay involved, to continue to fundraise for your local hospital, maybe that's coming back to campus the weekend of dance marathon for a weekend celebration um, and to celebrate the fundraising and great work that the current undergraduate students are doing. Um, Madison, would you maybe want to speak to your experience as an alumni with DMA? Yeah, absolutely. So Dance Marathon at UF does have the Dance Marathon Alumni um, Association group, which was formed not, not since the beginning, so somewhat in the last few years, I want to say. Um, and they do things all throughout the year. Anytime DM at UF is kind of having their own campaign, the DMA will make a spin on it and do something alumni specific. Um, we do have our own miracle child that we support, things like that. So I guess my biggest piece of advice is one, to join your Dance Marathon alumni group or be the one to start it, like Blair said. And then I guess just participate along the way. I was 
one of my favorite things was just getting, which I, I'm only a year out, but getting to be an encourager of the students that are going through it right now and knowing what they um, were going through. That was one of my favorite parts of kind of staying involved was just getting to cheer them on, whether it be for a specific event, um, anything like that. If they asked for a donation, like I was always so gladly just to pop in every now and then to give them a, a one quick, you know, cheer to keep them going. So definitely staying involved with your DMA and participating on the alumni side and then definitely encouraging the current students going through it because I you know it gets hard. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so I wanna answer a few more quick questions um, from the chat. Um, one is from a high school student, um, high school sophomore who's kind of looking towards college and applying their dance marathon experience. Um, for the rest of, the question was about what um, should they plan on for the rest of high school to make getting into their dream school easier, which I think we can all apply to what can I do to get into my dream job. Um, and I think considering what um, Ashley was talking about in making a plan, what are the new skills and things that you might learn um, and how do you mark time from now until you'll be applying to school or from now until you'll be applying for a job um, and how can you learn new skills and also practice articulating the ones that you already have, the things that you have learned from Dance Marathon. Um, so I think I would, we'll have this um, presentation available so you can look back and see, okay, what were some of those recommendations about making a plan if you've got some time, but I think you're already doing great things by joining this and starting to think about those things. Um, and certainly utilizing the Dance Marathon Network as you start to look at schools or as you start to look at jobs um, is a great way to do that. Um, and then, um, Taylor, do you want to direct our next question? Yeah, for sure. Ashley, I think this would be a great one for you. Um, I think it's, it's very relatable for a lot of folks. Uh, but the question is, what is a good way to start fostering relationships with people that are in fields that we want to be in? Um, so it, I guess for this person specifically, they, and maybe they're thinking of using their dance marathon advisor um, as maybe one of those supporters of their, of their next career choice. Um, but how, but that per, their advisor maybe didn't work with them directly. Um, so how do they foster a relationship with them to then be able to use them as a, as an additional resource? That's a great question. And that definitely goes back to the networking kind of challenges that we all have. Um, and so I think it's great that you have already identified somebody that you're looking up to. Um, and I have no doubt in my mind that if you reached out to that person and said, you know, I would love to, when social distancing is, you know, we're all good, you know, um, take you out for coffee or maybe grab lunch, or even now you could set up a virtual coffee chat with them um, or email. Um, I would love to just learn more about the role that, that you know, you have or how you got to, you know, I'd love to learn about your dance marathon story and, you know, some things that you learned along the way. I think if you, when you first reach out to somebody, especially if you've never met them or don't really know them, um, you know, asking them to, that you want to learn more about them and the role that they're in or how they got to where they are. Um, I think if you approach it in that way, more often than not, people are going to be so excited to talk to you because I always think of the three things. Number one, people love to talk about themselves. Number two, I think, again, people just have this, you know, they just have this, uh, they want to help people. They just have it in them that they just really want to help people and give back. Um, and if this person's already on your campus um, and is an advisor um, or doing the, that type of work, they're probably going to be thrilled to, to help you. And I think the third thing is put yourself in that person's shoes or you probably will be in that person's shoes several years from now when you know kind of a, an aspiring prof professional comes to you and says i'd love to learn more about you know i admire you and would love to learn more about how you got to where you are you feel so flattered um and so i think it's just a all-around positive um way to approach it when you you know, first make that email or that LinkedIn message and just, you know, ask, you know, do you have a few minutes or could I have a few minutes of your time to just ask you some questions about how you got to where you are? Um, because I would love to kind of, you know, learn more about what it's like to be a, you know, dance marathon advisor or, you know, fill in the blank, whatever position. 
Um, so I would definitely approach it that way, but I have no doubt that if you reach out to that person, they will be very excited to talk with you. Thank you so much, Ashley. And um, I think that's the last question. We had some similar questions in the chat, but um, if your question didn't get answered, we'll go through them um, in detail and make sure that they all get answered in the blog post. Um, so again, want to, to thank our panelists for joining us today. We really are so grateful that you've joined us and shared your expertise and experience. Um, I wanted to just kind of quickly highlight some of the resources that were mentioned. Again, we'll make sure all of these are linked in the follow-up blog post and in the YouTube video um, comments as well. Um, so some resources from your career center, all of your advisors, so your dance marathon manager, your hospital, and your campus advisor. So consider them as a resource to you. Um, the wider network that you're a part of, so alumni of your program, um, other participants, other committee members, um, campus professionals, corporate partners who you've worked with, Miracle Families even, think of all of the folks that you have gotten a chance to interact with as a result of your involvement with Dance Marathon. Um, here are some of those resources, again, that Ashley mentioned or that we've talked about. Um, and again, those will all be linked. So hopefully these can be helpful to you throughout your journey um, in whatever comes next in this next chapter of life. So quickly to recap some of the takeaways, what we hope you got out of um, our time together today is that you understand the skills that you've developed as a result of your involvement in Miracle Network Dance Marathon. And we'd encourage you to look back at your position descriptions, at the work that you've done to do some of the reflection that Ashley talked about, to try to further develop that list, um, to articulate the experiences that you've had with Dance Marathon um, and how those have impacted your development and contributed to your value as a professional or as a prospective candidate. Again, think about the experiences that you've had. Um, write down those stories and then the skills that you've gained from them so that you can share those with others, whether it's in an interview setting um, or one day when we invite you back to be a part of a panel like this. Um, and then finally, to realize the resources and network available to you as part of this movement and then as part of your campus. So know that you're participating in Dance Marathon as one of more than 300 colleges and universities and more than 100 high schools across the US and Canada. So if there's a job that you want or a school you want to go to, likely someone there has heard of Dance Marathon or has been involved with Dance Marathon. Um, so consider that when you're thinking about what your opportunities are and join the Children's Miracle Network Hospital's LinkedIn page, find people um, who know what it is that you've experienced and the value that your dance marathon experience has brought. And like Ashley said, I'm sure they would be more than willing to connect with you and to help you out any way that they can. Um, so we've got one last poll for those of you who are, um, we're able to, to hang on here till the end, which we appreciate. Um, but our last poll um, is just if you learned something today that will help you leverage your dance marathon experience to your postgrad plans and we'll give you a few seconds to vote um, here. It looks like 100% of folks who are voting so far have said yes, which is great. And if you have ideas or if there are things that you would like to, to hear and um, to have um, available to you as resources to help leverage your dance marathon experience, we want to hear that. So reach out to your dance marathon manager. Um, feel free to let us know how it is that we can help you share the value of your dance marathon experience as you move forward. So we want to thank you all for being here today, um, for joining us. And if you are a graduating senior, we just want to wish you all the best and congratulate you on the remarkable achievements that you've had. Um, we hope that you will join us if you haven't already signed up um, for our senior ceremony on May 13th at 7 p.m to celebrate your achievements and the great work that you've done. Um, you can register at the link that I think was just dropped in the comments to receive a gift from CMN Hospitals and to join us for that. We've got over a thousand graduating seniors joining us so far and hope that you'll be there to recognize the remarkable contributions you've made on this movement. Um, so thank you all so much again for joining us. Um, thank you especially to our panelists um, and we can't wait to see what you all do next. 
um, with Dance Marathon as your experience, we know that great things are to come for you. So thanks so much, everyone, and look out for a follow-up email with all of these resources and the recording available. All right, bye-bye.